territory since there's Bruce, two. do you know what kind of grouper this is? So this is Bruce. Yep, go ahead, yeah, Bruce. I'm a little confused about there's this. another one further down. It looks down. like it could be the same species. I think it is, but the color pattern looked different earlier. Now it looks more similar. It's got more of a white mark. Oh, there are two of them, by the way, uh, in the area. And this is the kind of topography that they there's like. There's another one way off the distance. I think you have more than two down here. Around and orient to. Mm -hmm. uh, but it looks like that one did have the bars on the body. It also has a darker saddle the on top of the tail in front of the tail fin on what they call the caudal peduncle. Oh, there's two, there's another one. Oh, there are, there are three of them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, cool. well, these uh, groupers, groupers are well known for forming spawning aggregations. And uh, I'm not saying that that's what we're seeing here, but they, you often see more than one in the same area. Uh, the aggregation for spawning also makes them very susceptible to overfishing because fishermen will target those, those aggregations where they know that they can catch a lot of them in one area. Mm -hmm. So um, groupers are very um, uh, susceptible to overfishing. Uh, Bob Humphreys, who's here and has worked a lot with it, says, yeah, they're definitely the eight-bar grouper, hypothoretic uh, octopasiata. So I will type that in here in a moment. Okay, so, Bruce, you mentioned the coloration. Um, so, in shallow water groupers in the Caribbean, the groupers have the ability to sort of change their coloration guy. a little bit. Does that happen hit. here, too? I'm not sure. And in the Pacific? Pilot. What's that? I'm not hearing the pilot. I uh, don't know for sure, but yes, they, uh, they can, the and I think it's highly likely that yeah, that could yeah, happen. Pilot. There's uh, behavioral yeah, control on the uh, darkness, yeah. lightness of the fish, how uh, One, two, the two, three, four, are. Five. Uh, there could be uh, changes with that color as they interact with okay. each other, uh, males and females, or uh, uh, you know, changes during feeding and whatever. So yes, that's, that's a very good possibility. Uh, we, we don't know much about the behavior of these deep water groupers at depth. You know, most closer? of them that are seen oh, are yeah, caught by really fishermen and hauled up water. onto the boat, and you don't see what they look like alive. Uh, so we were hoping for um, some bottom fish uh, views for the interest of fisheries, and, and you definitely have that here with these uh, grouper species. And again, because of the nature of their aggregation the and the way that they okay. form spawning aggregation, we don't know about area. that for this particular yep. species, but certainly other groupers do that. Uh, they're uh, seeing some uh, observations of uh, behavior in the natural habitat are of interest for uh, uh, ideas that might apply to management. Thanks, Bruce. Yeah, I mean, one of our main partners on these, this expedition is NOAA, NOAA Fisheries. Fisheries yeah. So finding these, this sort of information and being able to provide that back to the resource managers of the region is really great.